All right, guys, you want to put a home theater system in a bedroom or in a room that doesn't have studded interior walls. What are you going to do when the wife doesn't let you put bookshelf speakers? She won't let you put tower speakers. She won't let you put on wall speakers. What are you going to do? That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. What you going to do? What you going to do when she comes for you? Hey folks, I'm Gene Delasala with AudioHawks. We're here with Jackson! Jackson! From Haven Smart, done, done, in the house. How's it going, What's bud? Up, brother? I want to talk to you guys about this special system in the AudioHawks Smart House. Boots on the ground, we're in the master bedroom. We've got a 5.2.2 system that's inconspicuous, makes the wife happy, makes me happy, everybody's happy. It's a 5.1.2 for all the dorks out there. Correct, but, but we, do have, we do have two subs. So what are you guys gonna do when you can't put an in-wall speaker or an on-wall speaker or a box speaker? Mm. You look at a passive soundbar. We've got the Klipsch Heritage soundbar. This is something I was very skeptical about. Don kept pushing me to get this system. Don, why are you such a fanboy of doing a passive soundbar like this in these <laughs> situations? <clears throat> well, first of all, I'm not a fanboy. I'm an audio nerd just like you are. However, as a professional integrator, we are faced on a daily basis almost with situations where clients have um, certain situations they can't not have bookshelves or they cannot have LCRs and he heaven forbid they can't have towers. A lot of times over fireplaces and family rooms, they have shelving uh, flanking the TV. So for years, integrators would put all in-ceiling surround systems even though manufacturers have come out with some pretty cool and, and uh, functional uh, angled in-ceiling speakers, it's still not quite the same as having that sound directed at you. So in years past, sound bars were kind of poo-pooed on as just cheap, for good reason, cheap sound, small drivers, a lot of powered sound bars. So the terminology for sound bar, people immediately go to like a Sonos or some kind of KLH or some kind of in the past cheap product. Vizio. Yeah, well, I, I don't want to get too crazy, but, and those are okay in situations, but for people who want true audio quality, now a plethora of manufacturers, and today we're talking about Klipsch, we could talk about Leon, we could talk about Next Level Acoustics, we could talk about Triad, and so and Sonant. These companies are actually making really high fidelity, high quality sound bars within the limitations of the size and, and what you do. So now your LCR can point directly at your seating area. You've got good dialogue, which is really important. And, and through crossovers, custom built drivers, I know a lot of companies like RBH um, and, and I know uh, Leon go to Morel to make a, a thinner, um, lower profile driver. They are actually putting out true audiophile quality, high fidelity sound bars that will change you. And I know, Gene, you gave me a little bit of grief on that. And because as the godfather, you absolutely didn't want to do that. But I'm like, just trust me on this, brother. And Klipsch was amazing and sent Gene a um, one of their, their flagship heritage line sound bar, and along with some of their um, reference. Pro yeah, Pro 160. In-ceiling speakers and JL Audio um, sent a pair of their amazing in ceiling speak uh, subwoofers. And what do you think? Well, here's the thing. Um, I have to admit this bastard was right because this system just Every rocks, man. I really enjoy the experience I'm getting in here. Let me make this clear. This is a passive sound bar, so I'm still using the internal amplification. You're using the Anthem now, right? Anthem MRX mm -hmm. 1140, right. which I love that receiver. It's just so easy to set up. Anthem Arc Genesis with the phase alignment tool yeah. is money it's money dude money. it figured out exactly what crossover frequency to set between the passive soundbar and the subs. which is high on the transitional frequencies exactly on a soundbar you're probably going to want to be about a 120 to 110 a little bit higher than you would on a bookshelf so yeah this the the clips subwoofer i mean uh, the clips heritage soundbar has uh dual four inch drivers for each channel 
It doesn't play below 120 hertz. It even says it very clearly in their manual. Mm -hmm. You need to pair this with a sub. And that's exactly what I did. I got some of the very best in-ceiling subs on the market the from JL best. Audio. Yeah. Probably the best. They are. Dual eights and these subs hammered on. They hammered. <laughs> he was like concerned no because the whole process of installation, which we documented on earlier videos, is a little bit involved. Retro on these things would have, would have been impossible here and difficult in most situations. However, we have done it. JL Audio has figured it out, how to add a product into a ceiling or a wall, decouple it mechanically from that, and give true output. First time we installed and heard these dual 8-inch JL Audio subs, which they make for the ceiling or for the, or for the wall, we were like, oh my God, it sounded like a, a, a pair of 12 inch box subwoofers. Mm -hmm. Now, many of you are going to doubt me, and I know in the comments they're going to say something, but I'm telling you, hold your tongue till you get to hear them. They're bad, right? They're really, really good. So, yeah. in this system, you literally walk into this room and all you experience is bedroom. You, you look at the things, the knickknacks, the furniture, the curtains, the motorized shades. Nothing is uh, the fire, the electronic fireplace, nothing is drawn to your attention. Um, but when you turn it on and fire the system up, like we just did a little earlier, it rocks. Well, let me give you a little bit of that's really cool about the Klipsch Heritage Soundbar. Number one is it's customized. You could get this cut to the size of your TV. Right. So in this room, we've got a 65 inch Sony. We had it cut just so it fits perfectly with the Sony. It's just as wide as a TV. It mounts on the wall. The installation's fairly simple. And it's very seamless. I love the fact that it has a wood finish on well, it. Well, it offers, so actually Klipsch has a multitude of, of cabinet colors and cabinet wood finishes. Mm -hmm. And also the grill. They've got some really cool funky retro. So if you had like a mid-century kind of theme or all the way to contemporary or, or transitional, they've got you covered in, in a true high fidelity product. Yeah. Now, it's not cheap, so if you want to, I had my best friend's father once said, it's never been, e it's never been cheap to be hip and trendy. Right. So if you want your entry fee is, is a bit high, but if you want the very best performance in something that's not going to stick out like a sore thumb, mm. it's costing you a bit. I think this- It's around the $3,000 price about 3, range. 3000 bucks, yeah. To, depending on the width, the material that, that you choose. But I mean, three, a center channel and a pair of bookshelves of this similar quality is going to be comparable, I would say, in price. And then you have to deal with the cabinets and where you're going to place them and whatnot. So yeah. this might not be the product for everybody, but at Haven Smart, we do custom installations. And those are very designer driven. These interiors of these homes, these multi-million dollar homes are stunning. And this gives us a tool in our toolbox, along with other manufacturers, on how to actually, especially above a fireplace, Gene, you see a lot of that, how to mount high fidelity sound at the right level, pointing at the listener, good dialogue, intelligibility, um, good output. The dynamics are crazy on this, I'm telling you. Yeah, the sensitivity is like 90 dB. Yeah. Um, I think it plays, it handles it'll 75 watts per it, channel. It'll, it'll, it'll play 110, 110 dB 110. is kind of where they. The, this think. thing has some some serious balls to it. It's those dual four inch drivers, a Sura Metallic. Sura Metallic, yeah. And then it's got the 90 by 90, three quarter inch uh, titanium horn. Yeah. horn. And you know, I guess the only downside is in a system like this is if you listen to a lot of music, you you don't get the stereo separation you would get well, if, if you put- Depending on the size of your right. TV. Yeah, depending on the size yeah, of your TV, because yeah. the speakers are closer together, but it does work really well when you use up mixing. I'm using the Anthem Logic up mixing for mm -hmm. music, and then it puts the Atmos speakers and the height speaker and the rear speakers into play. And it's a very satisfying experience. Now, I was skeptical that the center channel has the same driver configuration with the two mids and the tweeter on its side. I was thinking they probably should have done an MTM there. I'm not sure why Clips chose not to do the MTM at the middle array. But to be honest with works. you, it works really well. I don't hear any lobing issues. Granted, we're sitting in a bed, just my wife and I. But she hears the dialogue incredibly articulate and intelligible. I hear it as well. Um, I will tell you this, when I did the tuning using Arc Genesis, all I had to do really was get the phase alignment done, which is what Arc did for me, and maybe taper off the highs a little bit. Sometimes people might think that the Klipsch is a little bit brighter, a not little bit these. forward. It's not bad. It's like for a horn-loaded speaker, which I'm not usually a fan of, these are very listenable. Yeah. Very little tuning that needed to be done. The output is insane. And then the in-ceiling speakers complement it so well. Don, it was brilliant because we have a tray ceiling here. Mm -hmm. 
We put the Atmos speakers in the center of the room, which is up higher. Right above the bed, just and forward right. is there. Exactly. Yeah. And it's about a foot higher than the rear speakers. And you didn't system, put them in the corners. I didn't, I okay. didn't put them in the corners, no. Yeah. We actually follow the Dolby Atmos guidelines to get good coverage in here. And I can't say enough things positive about the synergy of this system. Those JL Audio subs hammer. Now, I, mean, I, we, I didn't use the Dara room correction. Right. Um, it's available for people that want to use that. But the Anthem Arc Genesis just works so well. The Anthem receiver powers this system phenomenally. Right. It just works. Mm -hmm. Nothing overheats. Plenty of dynamics. That 600-watt amplifier from JL Audio is serious. All, all the business. dynamics you could want. Yeah. Like, I mean... I mean Th those jail subs just to talk about those again i can't reiterate enough how incredibly articulate how much output they have and you've installed they, it in multiple oh, systems, ton, tons of here, tons of and here. well we just did the third largest house ever built in america we put four jail in wall subs which i wanted to do right? eight yeah the 13.5s now i want and it was a big room like this is over six thousand cubic feet i wanted to do in wall uh, in room subwoofers couldn't do it couldn't find a place to hide them did the four jails it rocks i mean, reference theater so don't think that because you use an architectural product or architectural subwoofer you're not going to get the equal amount of base output because jail changes that the other advantage too is putting the ceiling uh the subwoofers in the ceiling it's just like putting them on a floor mm -hmm. it's still corner loaded it's still on a major surface like the ceiling is just like the floor so you're getting that boundary reinforcement from those subs and they're just so musical i mean i think these are ported cabinets but you would never they are, never they are, hear to, to give the output you yeah. never yeah. hear the poor mm -hmm. chuffing no you never hear poor chuffing and, and believe me i played music you turn me on to marion hill that mm -hmm. song differently. Oh, yeah. Boom, 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 boom. boom, boom, boom. boom. That song yeah, just rocks. My wife, it drives her nuts. She leaves the room. <laughs> I turn it up. I drink a little rum. I'm enjoying Eat it. Eat edible. Yeah. Yeah. Hang out. Hey, yeah. we can't talk about that. Oh, we can't. Okay. <laughs> Not that I do it, but. It is, it is, you know, I don't want to sound like a fanboy, but I'm very excited about how this system turned out. And I have a lot of thanks to give to Don Dunn from thanks, Haven man. Smart. Someone that has this kind of experience, because he's a dinosaur. I mean, he really is a dinosaur. I'm but, not a dinosaur. But he keeps himself up. He keeps himself educated. He keeps on top of the current trends well, in the look, industry. Experience doesn't do everything for you. Experience allows you to take new information and apply some what you've learned and lessons learned. I know a lot of people talk about, wow, I do it. You know, experience doesn't matter. Experience does matter. We do surround systems sometimes more than one a week and the, the most demanding clients you can imagine and the most beautiful homes that you can possibly imagine. Some of them are, are just all over the media. They're amazing. So they come to us and they, they, they don't want to impact the, the visual aesthetics of the room, but yet everybody wants performance. Mm -hmm. And you're just not going to get that. If you've got an all in ceiling surround, you're not, you're not where you need to be. However, with a sound bar and a high quality sound bar, as you experience yeah. as a skeptic, the biggest skeptic in the audio world, it, it works and yeah. it works better than you think it's going to work. And I want to give some love to the Pro 160 RPC oh, in, the insane, in the ceiling yeah. speakers. I think they retail for around 339 each. When I was running Arc Genesis and it was doing its chirps and it was doing full range, those things have a lot of bass output for an in ceiling speaker that doesn't have a back box. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe the kind of output that was coming well, out. Well, they're of those. designed for that, for the free air output. And, and Klipsch, say what you want about Klipsch. Klipsch knows how to rock. They know how to make a speaker with dynamics. Yeah. And it's it's a great quality product. It installs easy, especially for people trying to do Atmos applications. And you go on the internet and every expert's going to be like, oh, I'm selling speakers. No, they work great for Atmos. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, as long as you got the right speaker. So I think the whole system, when you when you break it down, I think the sound bar is a little under three grand. The JL Audio Sub is about 4,300. The Anthem MRX 1140 is about three grand. And then this, the in ceiling speakers are 339 each. You're looking at around a ten thousand dollar five point one point two setup, <laughs> but it's money well spent. You know, if you're going to spend, if you're putting in a system in your bedroom and you know you're going to watch a lot of TV in your bedroom, take the hit because you want to do it. Yeah. You want to cry once. You could put right? this in a in a decent sized family room. You can, especially sure. with a bigger TV where the speaker's wider. Yeah, and it gives you a little bit more sound stage a little bit more separation but listen listen to this and here 
any audiophile would be thrilled to have this in their in their bedroom or maybe some kind of small listening room or some kind of um you know tv viewing area um off a master bedroom i mean it's just fantastic again you got a fireplace you want to hang a tv above it you want good sound you got two options because you're probably not even if you can do towers or bookshelves putting your center is going to stick out it might have to sit on a mantle it's just not conducive or you do a center channel that that's real small and weak and it doesn't match the, the bookshelf the yeah. here you've got an evenly matched system the crossovers the computer computer design of it the way they did the, built it they understand all these things and clips is a, is a mega company and they put a lot of effort into this product plus it has a really cool retro look i mean it's yeah. just this house the theme of this like house you, is kind of rustic modern rustic and this sound bar really fits the theme well in this room mm -hmm. i just i can't say enough good things about it. i'm very happy I enjoy coming to bed at night with my wife, obviously, but especially because we can sit here and we can watch, you know, the latest Andor episode in Atmos. That show is just, it's a slow burn, but it's a really it's a real slow one. burn, but yeah. But there's it, just, there's just- Or you're watching a movie in here, then you want to pause it and come in here and pick it right back up. Exactly. Like we do some. Yep, yep. So guys, I hope you like this video. Give me some comments down below. Um, what are your experiences with architectural type products? How did you get really good sound in an environment that's not conducive of you putting box speakers or big subwoofers on the floor? I always like to hear people's solutions. Don as an integrator, totally. of course, loves Love to, to hear it. that as well. We're always looking for different angles on this stuff. Don, I appreciate your expertise here. I My appreciate pleasure. you coming here, dropping the knowledge on this system. And I appreciate Havensmart for helping me make the installation here because mm -hmm. it looks beautiful, it works well, and it's just very tight. We, we got lots more to cover. For sure. You guys have no idea this house has all the audio in every every aspect. Trust For sure. Me. Yep. Well, guys, that's it. And don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to us if you want to suggest video topics or answer questions. And until next time, my friends, keep, keep listening. listening. Yeah. Ready? It's recording. So Rhett's going to be happy. Yeah. Okay. I hope you uh, wore deodorant to today. Yeah, we'll to the left, so <laughs> All right. Ready to do some squats after this? Yeah. Okay. One, two. Are you ready after leg day? Oh, my God. I'll squat your ass. <laughs> Ew. Ew. All right. I got to get that mentally out of my head.